Can it work? Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear yeah. you. Perfect. Okay, good. It I'm not sure. I don't know if I've done it right. Listen, you have. We're on a learning okay. curve together. <laughs> I was just telling everyone, my name is Faduma. I'm the social media editor here at Telegraph Women's Sports. And we've been joined by Beth Mead. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you? No, I'm good, thank you. Are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I'm, the weather's kind of taken a turn in the last couple of minutes. Yeah. So. It was lovely two days ago, and then we trained in the rain yesterday, which was not so fun. Yeah, but no. That's really <laughs> That is true. I really thought we were getting a little bit of that British sun in the next couple of days, but maybe not. Our our Aussie girls at Arsenal have got too much of an expectation of sun. So when it comes (laughs) out, they're literally in the smallest corners of anywhere to get the sun. Oh, yeah. And they must think, like, you know, when you get really excited, when we get one day of sun, they're like, this must be insane. Yeah. Literally, they're like, what's the UV? And we're like, two. Just two. But um, for those of you who are just joining us, my name is Faduma. I'm the social media editor here at Telegraph Women's Sports. And with us today, we've got Beth Mead, um, who plays for Arsenal and the Lionesses. So we're going to talk a little bit about yourself, your journey, I guess, for football. And probably, like, most importantly, why everyone is here. It's International Women's Day a couple of days ago. We're going to talk about women that have inspired us both off the court and off the pitch and on the pitch. And also, you seem to have found, like, a new love for TikTok videos over lockdown. Is that right? Mm-hmm. A little bit. I think the, the first lockdown was when I kind of peaked with my TikTok. But yeah, I'm a little bit of a sucker. I could just sit on it all day and scroll, I think, which is quite sad. What are some of your favourite trends you've seen so far? Um, I, d- I just like the, the silly ones. I, obviously, I've done a couple with my dog and I even the one where you shout your dog's name and it's sat next to you and it's like, I'm here. Hi. But obviously, it can't say anything. It's like, hi, which I actually haven't done with my dog yet, but. Maybe that's one to do next. That is true. And England have actually been posting a lot of TikToks very recently. Um, and I think that's absolutely amazing for the progress of, and the development of women's sports. But I think for you, more importantly, um, you recently actually, before we get into all of that, congratulations, you just had your 100th WSL. You know, thank you. <laughs> what an achievement. How was that? I think I said in an interview when I got asked about it, I think it makes me a little bit old. <laughs> that about hundred appearances in the WSL, um, but no, it was ve- it was a very proud moment for me. I think I actually started in the league when I was sixteen, seventeen with Sunderland, so nearly ten years into my WSL career. But yeah, no, I've I've loved every minute of it. How was that initial start? Because obviously now you're at hundred appearances, you're a regular, you know, you know the drift of the WSL. But how was that initial start into the WSL with Sunderland? Yeah, I mean, it was tough, you know, we came, we got promoted into the league, we got um, from the league below and I was six, 17 maybe when I started in WSL 1 and I mean, there wasn't mu- much expectation on Sunderland being promoted so that was kind of like not too much pressure at the time which was quite nice um, but I mean, I just loved my football, like I was, I was playing as a number nine at that time as a striker um, and I was scoring goals for fun um, so I yeah, I was loving life. I mean, I didn't have too many worries at 17, so I was just playing my football. And, yeah, I guess you could say I'm quite experienced in this league now. But, yeah, you, you, uh, my early days are just as fun as they are now. How was that in your early days? Because, obviously, early on in your career, because you started so young, so I'm assuming you were still at college, going into university, going down, down that path of education, but also wanting to be a footballer. How was balancing the two? Yeah, I mean, I was at college when I first started and then I was at university when I actually, my final year of uni, when I went full-time with Sunderland. Um, I had a job on a weekend as a barmaid. Um, And yeah, I mean, it was tough to juggle. Uh, The people I worked for were really good. They'd let me go home early now when I had a game the next day. But yeah, I was was working in a restaurant, um, waitressing on tables and behind the bar. And then I would go and play a game of football the next day, so... Thinking about it now, you'd never probably think of that ever happening, but that's yeah. something I did in my yeah career leading to where I am now. I think a lot of people can relate to that, probably watching this who are at university and trying to juggle that with something else. How did you find yeah. that juggling face with university and doing your football? Um, yeah, I mean it was difficult. I think the shout like a big shout out to Teesside Uni where I went, like they were really good with me. Like uh, my classmates and my teachers were just very understanding of I might not be at every single lecture, I might be training through the day so I couldn't make it. So they would keep me up to date whether it was on the online portal or 
they'd send me pictures of stuff from the lectures and stuff like that. So it was quite difficult. Obviously, you're not sat there listening to what you'd probably need to hear, but you've kind of got to... I mean, I had to be quite disciplined in the fact that I had to go over everything a little bit again because I wasn't getting it there and then. But, yeah, the university were amazing. So I, they helped a lot with me. And, I mean, I had to do a lot myself. You know, I was dedicated in that sense. And I'm glad I did it when I did because it's as a full-time footballer now, it's even more hectic with stuff going on. And you probably, unless you're doing it part-time, it would be very hard to do full-time. So I would take my hat off to anyone if they're doing that right now. No, absolutely. I can take my heart off to anyone who's managing to do that because it is a crazy world. And obviously then following on from Sunday, you had your move into Arsenal. How was that transition into... Because Arsenal obviously are notoriously known as being a really well-established WSL team. Yeah. How did you find that initial move into Arsenal? Um, I mean, yeah, I was uh, quite nervous. You know, I kind of had established myself as a striker in the league at that time, scored quite a few goals and I'm happily Arsenal wanted me, but I mean, I've got to kind of go and do that at a club that's, no offence to Sunderland, a lot higher and a lot more historic in the women's game than they were. And I like to think that I yeah, fit in quite well. But, um, yeah, I had to work hard hard again. And, you know, there's a lot of international players who play in this team. So I had to work hard to get even in the team. Um, whereas at Sunderland at the time, I was probably playing most games and maybe not worrying too much about my position at that time. But I think that's obviously helped you in your development because another achievement that you have in the horizon in the next cup, in the next month, I think definitely, which will be mark yeah. three years since your senior debut for England. Which I'm not saying you're old because obviously I said 100 <laughs> WSL appearances, but how is that? Yeah, I mean, it, it it seems to have gone so fast. Like I don't even know where the three years have gone. Um, I mean, one year obviously, unfortunately, has been interrupted a little bit by the COVID situation, but. Yeah, I've loved every minute being away with the Lionesses and playing for them and wearing that badge for England. So, yeah, it's been a proud three years for me. Um, What's but, been yeah. your proudest moment, I guess, in those three years? Um, I think, yeah, a big one for me is the World Cup. Representing England at a World Cup in a, the first game against Scotland, big rival game, um, singing the national anthem that day was just quite emotional for me and my first World Cup game. Um and then you follow that up with a semi-final against USA. Um, that's what your dreams are made of. And no, I'm very honoured and privileged to have been able to say that I've played for my country at that level. Yeah, you get to work, play and work with some of the, um, amongst yeah. the best players, both at England and at Arsenal. Um, but of course, that's, that's not to say it hasn't been without its challenges, because I think part of the reason why you were so into uh, TikTok in the first lockdown is because you were also recovering from an injury. How was that like coming Yeah. From yeah, um, I think I got injured in the February. I did my ligament in my knee, my MCL, which is yeah. not the worst, but not the best. Um, it was difficult, you know. I started my rehab. I started to get into like a little routine, and then obviously COVID came, and we weren't allowed to leave our house. Um, so it was difficult, you know. I didn't have a bike at the time here, or not much equipment to do what I needed to do. So it probably slowed down the process of my rehab a little bit but I, I got myself into a re routine of doing it at home I spoke to the physios on FaceTime every day and they literally had to assess me over the phone um so yeah it was challenging but you've got to make good out of a bad situation and I think I got myself into pretty good shape considering I was stuck at, stuck in the house for god knows how many months it was it felt like a lifetime but yeah, yeah no it, it does feel like a lifetime especially with the multiple lockdowns that we've been in but you yeah. did come out of it and obviously like you had that just the last weekend, that 100th appearance and doing yeah. that last time. But I think, um, I guess looking ahead for you, what are you most looking forward to? Because obviously we've got Tokyo coming up and I think more exciting or equally exciting, depending on how you want to take it, is the home Euros. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot coming up. I mean, the Olympics is a, like a huge one, you know. We're lucky in football that we have the likes of the Euros and the World Cup and I know some athletes have literally worked four years just for the Olympics, but to be able to go to an Olympics would be yeah, beyond words. Um, I mean, it's, it's the girls have spoken about it being in London that have been the likes of Steph and Jill and people. Um, so they've said it, it tops most things and it's a completely different... I mean, there's a lot of different sports there. So, yeah, yeah it's quite, it would be an amazing honour to go there. Um, at even the end of the WSL season, I think that's going to be massive. You know, there's a lot of... 
there's not many spaces for Champions League, you know, the likes of us at Arsenal, who are chasing for that third spot right now um, against Man United, which shows how competitive the league is right now. But I think probably for a neutral more than Arsenal and United fans is probably exciting for everyone. And then, like you said, the home Euros coming up, I mean... To be involved in a Euros in itself is unbelievable, but to be one that's actually in this country would be, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, so a lot of excitement is coming up. A lot yeah, of, to, a lot of to, them. Hopefully, to hopefully have a final at Wembley, I think that would be pretty incredible. And hopefully yeah. fingers crossed seeing England at the final in Wembley. But you fingers. mentioned Jill Scott um, yeah. and you mentioned um, Steph Paul. And what were, who were like some of your role models, I guess, in women's football early on in your career and like some maybe some that you were with right now? Um, it's actually quite funny. Kelly Smith was always someone I looked up to. Obviously, her being at Arsenal, huge play for England. Um, yeah, I always looked up to her. Obviously, she she just retired when I signed for Arsenal, so I was a little bit good about that one. It would have been nice to play alongside her. She was just someone at the time who, yeah, I always looked up to, wanted to be like her. She was an unbelievable footballer and, yeah, a role model to me and probably many more of the girls are probably in the England squad right now. So yeah, she had a big effect on my career. Um, I was quite nervous as a kid. I met, I met her once and didn't dare talk to her. So my dad dragged me over by my ear to make sure I'd said hello. So, and now it's funny. She, she like, she, um, in the world cup, she was the person who said that I was in the world cup squad. So then that, that just becomes quite surreal in itself that she announced me being in the squad. So, yeah, she's a big, big person that's had an effect on my career and me probably wanting to become a professional and wanting to come to Arsenal. Yeah, and it's probably all gone, gone kind of, it's all come full circle, you know, being that girl yeah. like, and then getting a video from her. Yeah, yeah. It is, yeah, it was quite surreal. But yeah, she's someone that I loved as a kid and still do now. I guess away from football, was there anyone else that's inspired you? Because I think a big part of the theme for International Women's Day was, you know, challenging different areas and thinking about women that have gone above and beyond in whether it be in sports or other areas. She's still involved in football, but a big person that I do hugely respect is Megan Rapino. I think on and off the pitch, she fights for what she wants and what the women's game needs. Um, and yeah, she's not a afraid to speak her mind about things that are right that are, are, are equal pay um what we rightly deserve as women she's fighting for and i respect every element of how she goes about it and she's a big person on and off the football pitch that um inspires me and i respect massively yeah do you think those voices are really important in football especially in women's football which continues to grow on a regular basis yeah, massively. I think there's a lot of barriers still need to be broken down and she's the one kicking kicking that door down at the moment for us. So, um, yeah, like I said, I respect massively someone who is willing to, you know, speak out, put themselves out there and kind of take the criticism that comes with it. But it's rightly what we deserve and she's hopefully will continue to break them barriers for us and we can help as women along the way. Yeah, I think... Mean- Rivalries aside, I think Megan Rapinoe is definitely yeah. something that the majority of like women's football will definitely say that they hold yeah. tight and think massively about. And, you know, when you mentioned Kelly Smith, he got me thinking about Rachel Yankee because Rachel Yankee is definitely yeah. another one, an Arsenal legend who's still doing amazing things off um, the pitch right now. Yeah, no, I mean, fair play to them. You know, they're still fighting for it and stuff in football that actually they're not really involved playing-wise now, but they're still try to get the game to move even further forward than it is right now so yeah I respect them women hugely every single one of them that put themselves out there and that want better for the game and I yeah we all do but some people say it louder than others which is yeah what we need definitely we've had a couple of questions that have been coming through throughout the day um, yeah. and I'm going to start going through a couple of them for you I think one of them I I think really applies to you at the minute is like how do you stay motivated when you go through challenging times um I mean I'm quite a silly person in general um I think sometimes it's not taking everything too seriously obviously when you need when you need to do things you need to do hard work I, I, I put it in but I think yeah not everything in life has to be so serious and you've got to have yeah. them silly moments and, them in, and moments to enjoy and cherish and that yeah, that's probably what I would would say. Just have a little bit of fun in life because 
it's a short one as it is and we, we need to enjoy ourselves. That is true. Although I think the person who's a victim of your silly moments at the minute is Danielle van der Donk on most of yeah. your shots. She hits me on a life. daily basis, I think. Uh, what's, or I'll what's try the... and rope her into something and she'll be like, no, not today. And eventually she'll crack because she has to. Yeah, and then hopefully it'll go viral and then she'll never live it down. Yeah, probably. That's <laughs> no. it. Won't live it down. Uh, moving, so, sticking on that similar theme, of, I guess, of teammates, yeah. who... Um, probably who's been your most exciting player to play against or and also at the same time who's the most exciting player that you get to play with? Um, I mean, generally Arsenal, I think you've got some unbelievable talented players, the likes of Kim Little, who just makes you a better person on and off the pitch from a worth ethic every yeah. day. Um, she's an ultimate pro. To someone like Bia Miedema, who... It's just a talent in herself. Um, scores goals for fun. Just is one in a million in the position that she does, and she makes everything look easy. So, she, th- them two are pretty amazing players, as are the rest. Um, I'm quite lucky to play in the team that I do and play alongside the players that I, I have. Um, someone that I always I have enjoyed watching a lot, especially for the American team, is Rose Lavelle, who's at Man City. I think she's an amazing footballer. Not your typical footballer. Probably people will look at her and be like, "Yeah, she doesn't look like a footballer." But she, on, honestly, I think she's unbelievable. That everything, that the, she makes everything look easy. She's a technician and she'll run for days. So she's a player that, yeah, I admire and respect massively. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think Rosabar, especially with the influx of American talent into the WSL, has really grown it. Do you think that's like really important for, to to making the WSL like the best league in the world? Hopefully. Yeah, like I, the the caliber of players that I've wanted to come over and play over here, whether it's been the Australian players that have come, the Americans, Sam Lewis, Rose, um, Sam Kerr, Peniel Harder, like big big players want to come and play in this league because it's one of the most competitive leagues in the world now, and them the likes of them players coming over is only going to make it more competitive and make it better and make it the best league in the world. And yeah, it's exciting times, but yeah, tough times for for teams who aren't getting them them big players and we're all chasing them around but now it's it's great for the league and it's exactly what it needs right now and fair play to the league that them players want to come over here the attraction of the league is exactly the same we've you know the players that have been here like for a long time playing in this league have made it what it is today you know so yeah it's great that we're getting that attraction over here now yeah, and it's definitely making the league very, very competitive. So although we're without fans in the stands at the moment, and you're definitely missing their presence, and then yeah. a big part of what you do online is like you interact with fans um, through social media, whether that be sending videos, birthday messages, or yeah. whether it would be like responding um, to a tweet. How important is that to you to keep that interaction going? Yeah, I think it's massive. You know, we miss the fans a lot at games and. I've always been the player that's interacted with them after games and tried to show my appreciation as much as I can. And just because we can't see them doesn't mean we can't stop interacting them with them. And I always like to, yeah, when I can um, interact and have a little bit of fun with them or wind them up or something. Uh, it's it's always nice. And I mean, they support us and we wouldn't be where we are today without them. So, yeah, huge respect for the fans as well. And I'm sure they're missing it too. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I think speaking of like iconic fans, I think Maria's song is probably up there as being top <laughs> Arsenal level. Yeah, Maria is a big, big legend at Arsenal now. She, we love her, and I think I know all of her songs off by heart because you hear that loud every game. So, yeah, I think like even guest presenters, journalists, there just naturally start to pick it up because it's just yeah. on the regular, which is an amazing part of that. And fans and everything else I guess going back to you and your journey into football what would you say were some of the challenges that you experienced early on in football whether that be through balancing it with your education or I know that you, you had a part-time job whilst playing football or whether it was just anything else um yeah obviously what I spoke about earlier were huge challenges but yeah ones that were probably the norm at the time um I think when I was younger where I came from I was from basically a little village near the seaside which didn't have much opportunities nearby um I had to maybe travel to Middlesbrough which was maybe 40 minutes to an hour down the road and there wasn't a lot of pathways for girls when I was younger so I actually played for a boys team until I was 10 11 so which 
to this day I still glad that I did that I think it helped me develop and you know learn a different side to the game and toughened me up a little bit but in terms of trying to play for a girls team was quite difficult at that time till I got to a little bit older I was maybe playing five six years of my career before I even went to a girls team so that was probably one of the most difficult things getting the opportunity to actually be in that environment and I think I got used to playing with the boys I didn't want to play with the girls after them which is probably the worst thing in the end (laughs) yeah and then moving away from that making your senior debut for England how was that and can you talk us through I guess how that came about like you know who you played against etc it was it was actually a, a tough one because obviously I was so proud and of the moon to get my debut, but it, we actually drew nil nil in the World Cup qualifiers to Wales at Southampton in the men's ground, and I think there was thirty thousand fans there. I came on as a sub, and you know you want to make that impact and help to score a goal, and just that date didn't come. So the girls were probably obviously quite disappointed, but at the same time I was quite on a high because I just got my debut. So. Yeah, it was a weird one. I was trying to stay like a little bit, yeah, humble and quiet <laughs> at the time. But really, I wanted to scream from the rooftops because I was so happy that I'd played. But yeah, to England standards, it probably felt like a loss on that day for the girls. So it was a bit of sweet one, really. Yeah, but it was one that led to obviously amazing moments off the back of that because you scored like goals. Yeah, pieces. yeah. No, I mean, I'm grateful for Phil for giving me that chance and. Yeah, since then I've had unbelievable memories. So, I mean, even my debut is still a fantastic memory for me. The atmosphere was unbelievable. Did you keep your shirt? I did. Okay. I think I've got I've got it in a cabinet at home, at my parents' house. So they're keeping it safe for me. You're like nice and framed in the house, like somewhere. Yeah, like, pristine. Nobody touches it. My mum does sit every now and then. She just <laughs> I think that I would I would absolutely have a shirt like that if I was playing for England. That would be yeah, you think you've got to. You've got to. Yeah. Your first ever shirt, I mean, you don't know how long your career is going to be. So you've got to cherish every moment and that's a big moment for me in my career. Yeah. And for those of you who might just be joining, we've got a couple of more minutes left with Beth Mead. Uh, my name's Faduma. I'm a social media editor here at The Telegraph. Beth Mead's join us and we're just talking about her journey into football um, and just going through some highlights and also talking about some women that have inspired us in football. We've already spoken about Kelly Smith being a massive inspiration for you, your, I guess, your peers over at Arsenal, um, the Lionesses that you also play with. But I guess for your ambitions um, in football and also ex- outside of football, because you're a massive advocate for getting more young girls into sports. Um, how important is that for you? Yeah, it's super important. I mean, I've um, been doing um, the Driving Force series that's on Sky recently with um, Judy Murray. And I think she's an unbelievable advocate for wanting the women's game to get to the next level, not just football, every sport. Um, so I've really enjoyed working with her and kind of try to get the women's game and speak about it openly to try and get it to the next level. And yeah, Judy's a bit, like I said, a huge person that's trying to drive that forwards. Yeah, no, Judy, Judy Murray is incredible. And Judy Murray is also someone that um, vocally speaks out about whether things are going right or wrong in whatever sport that may be. So she's definitely an advocate for the game in a lot of ways. And obviously we were just talking about Euro 2022 and it being here in the UK, um, fingers crossed, England at the final at yeah. Wembley. That- what we're holding out for how um how do you feel about possibly going ahead to that and you know making that as a target going forward yeah I mean individually I think it's going to be very tough for the Caribou player player that there is right now and which is fantastic you know we've got to be competitive and we've got to be at our top of our game which is only going to help our country but yeah it's exciting you know playing in England in big stadiums hopefully fingers crossed we'll have big crowds then and yeah. Um, it's exciting times to look ahead and hopefully we can make it as big as possible over here and of all over the world. So that's something that we want to do and create and hopefully we can do really well in that that tournament. Do you feel like, off the back of the Women's World Cup, because lots of people spoke about how um, that really changed football. Of, co- of course, unfortunately, we had COVID, which like put a stop to it. So, but yeah. in the it really felt like it really grew in the first couple of months of the back of the World Cup. Yeah, massively. I think the games after the World Cup, like you could see the change in the amount of people that were coming to games, the atmosphere of the games, uh, the quality of obviously, like I said earlier, the players that wanted to come over and play in England. Like it had a huge effect 
on it and the growth of the game was was massive and yeah unfortunately to COVID it kind of put a big stop to that but hopefully we can kind of get back to a little bit of normality and you know try and get back to where it was and keep pushing and making it bigger and bigger yeah and obviously it's international it was international women's day on monday and we were talking about we're here on tiktok talking about women in sports and you know you've spoken about personal hero being kelly smith i've spoken about rachel yankee being like the driving force behind my interest in sport was there any like um did you ever go to any england games growing up and you were really like this is like why i want to make my debut yeah it was actually (laughs) it was it's a bit of a one that sucks and it's not great for Kelly, but I actually turned up and got there late and Kelly was already set, got sent off. So I actually missed her playing, but I got to meet her in person because of that. And there wasn't actually many fans at the game. It was literally, a, I can't, I mean, my dad could easily tell you where it was, but it was literally yeah. a little football ground like with um, barriers around the side of it and you just stood at the side <laughs> of the pitch. There wasn't even stands at the stadium. So that's how far like the game has obviously come, but yeah. When I met her, she was like, she was unbelievable with me. And I mean, yeah, maybe that's something that happens for a reason. I got a chance to meet her personally, but obviously it wasn't great for her on the day for getting sent off. But yeah, England won that. I remember England winning that game and remembering that I wanted to play on that pitch and be just like them. And, you know, that's kind of what I always hold with me when I get a chance to play for my country, that there's some kids watching me or my teammates who were a little Beth Mead. So... Yeah, we've we've got to keep driving and wanting young girls to just be like, and you know, get as many girls interested in the game as possible. Because I'm a little bit scared for the next generation how competitive it's going to be then as well. You know, in the next five ten years, it's going to be a pretty tough game to be involved in. So yeah, it keeps you on your toes. So you're fine. Fighting, but yeah, yeah. I th- I think I'll be with a Zimmer frame by then. <laughs> but. <laughs> Um, no, it's exciting. It's exciting to see, hopefully, that the competitiveness and the young girls getting opportunities at a lot younger age are going to be yeah, ridiculous footballers. We're going to have too many Messi's and Ronaldo's running around, I think. So, Are there any that you're um, looking at, Looking at like, you know, um, the last England game? There's quite a few um, debuts in that moment. Are there any of, like, who are making the ranks in the team right now that you look at and you're like, you guys are going to be, like, amazing in a couple of years? we've got so much talent coming through at England it's ridiculous um you know we've got Lotta who I play with daily at Arsenal who's still young she's willing to learn very good footballer and um all the I mean Chloe Kelly Lauren Hemp Ella Toon even Lauren James who has unfortunately been injured recently like they are technically like very very good footballers and you know they're keeping the like the likes of Lauren Hemp and Chloe Kelly, they're pushing me right now to be better because they're doing unbelievable right now, which means I have to do even better. So, yeah, it's it's very exciting times for the youth and, yeah, England of players coming through. Yeah, and they keep you on your toes, so you can't really... Yeah, they do massively. I need to up, up my game massively, which is only credit to them for playing how well I do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we we're talking about TikToks that you've basically been taking part in TikTok trends, and you know your dog's been featuring in your TikTok. I'm still trying to convince you to get me uh, me them on one, which might yeah. be a bit of a challenge. <laughs> yeah, she's not the most um, bounciest person to do want to be willing I to do it. If you go by the route of like Lisa Evans, yeah, like, you've got to you go know, through Lisa. You've got to go through like a couple of people, and then before you know, you've got the whole squad. Yeah. This is a good one to do it with. Joe will be leading from the front, like everything. <laughs> yeah, no, this one, no, Lisa's is probably a very good one to do. She does quite a bit of stuff for me, so she ropes me and I rope her in. Yeah, it's a nice being able to have that, I guess, because obviously now with England showing more and more um, of the lionesses on their social media page, whether that be through obviously tricks, because I think the other day we saw um, Nikita Paris celebrated her birthday, but it was also like uh, a, a, you know a shot that she did during training. Um, which was incredible, and that was shared yeah. like everywhere. But and you also have those fun moments. How important is it for you to always like you know have women's sports at the forefront of media? Yeah, I think it's huge. You know, um, it's funny like fans actually really like them personal videos or pictures or just something a little different that you don't see in everyday life. 
yeah. through maybe club social medias or England social media. So it's quite nice to have them little personal touches to stuff that you put out there because fans fans really really enjoy it and I mean we enjoy putting stuff like that out as long as the fans enjoy it as well and but I think it's very very like it's very important we've got to you know keep the women's at the forefront of everything and yeah like I said earlier we love our football and want to put stuff on but sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of fun and show your silly side as a person or you personally yeah absolutely well thank you so much King was up and your time to come and speak to us and tell us everything about I guess your journey from my actually before that it just reminded <laughs> this just reminded me about the fact that how you've been sucked up into the world of being like a London fan but you're not actually from London so, how, so outside of I guess outside of supporting Arsenal in London growing up what, what was another team that you were a massive supporter of yeah I think uh, a lot of people uh, speak about this a lot on social media because I, I mean generally as a person I enjoy watching football so I appreciate more in the game or if a decision like VAR and handball now just blows my mind so <laughs> I'm quite vocal on I would say Twitter mostly about you know footballing yeah. decisions and stuff but yeah I, I really enjoy watching Arsenal when they when they're playing well um but growing up my dad my um was a big Man United fan and he brought me up being a Man United fan so yeah, I loved watching the likes of Beckham and Giggsy and Skulls, the old, the old school 92 gang. I won't say Phil because I'm not going to big him up right now. But yeah, I'm a United fan, but of course I love to see Arsenal do well on a daily basis because, yeah, that's the club I play for. But us as footballers, we, are, we, have, a, we have a team that we support. Just because we play for a team doesn't mean we support them. Like, obviously, we've been brought up brought up supporting Man United so that's a team that yeah I, I I enjoy watching when they're doing well but it's been a tough few years watching them as well that is true I will say that as a also United fan it's been a very mm-hmm. tough few years watching them but it also gives a bit I guess a nice bit of rivalry in the WSL because you, like you said Man United are one of the teams that you are trying to challenge yeah. for that Champions League place but once again thank you so much for giving up your time no, thank you for having me. Uh, um, and hopefully over the next couple of weeks TikTok will be do will be doing a lot more to promote women in sports like yourself and you'll be out here sharing your stories and with it being International Women's Day um, I'm definitely encouraging people to go out and find out more about women in sports whether it be yeah. current players like Beth Mead past players like Kelly Smith there's lots of incredible stories that people can get behind and on that note I guess we're going to leave you guys thank you so much for watching